GBN we keep you informed. I'm Michelle Jones and in the news. 52-year-old spouse shot dead at lover's home. Ex-boyfriend being sought. Police are probing what might be a love triangle turned deadly. Following the killing of a man on Belvedere Road in Red Hills, St. Andrew, on Monday afternoon. The dead man has been identified as 52-year-old Ishmael Seymour from East Avenue in Greenwich Farm, Kingston 13. Seymour is believed to be a licensed farm holder. According to reports, the ex-boyfriend of Seymour's 27-year-old girlfriend is being sought as a person of interest in the killing. Reports are that around 1 p.m., the girlfriend was at home with her ex-boyfriend when Seymour, who was her current partner, reportedly showed up and tried to gain entry. Police said the woman opened a side door and went outside to talk to Seymour when an argument developed between them. It reportedly became physical. It is understood that the woman fled to the back of the house and shortly after, four loud explosions sounding like gunshots were heard. She reportedly called out for help and with the assistance of neighbors, returned to the house where she saw the now deceased lying on his back in an unfinished section of the home in a pool of blood. Residents summoned the police who discovered Seymour with what appeared to be gunshot wounds to the face and upper body. He was allegedly clad in a multicolored shirt, black shorts, pink and yellow underwear, white slippers with a black gun holster to the front of his waistband. Neither the ex-boyfriend nor a gun was reportedly found at the scene. DJ Molly Don freed of sexual assault charges in Barbados. Emerging dancehall artist Molly Don and members of his entourage are expected to return to Jamaica today after experiencing a troubling ordeal in Barbados when they were detained after being falsely accused of sexual assaulting a woman. On his Instagram story, Molly Don, given name Kimali Hilton, praised the police for their professionalism, writing, Respect to the Barbados police for a good investigation. Hashtag believe, hashtag freedom. The quick singer rejoiced at his release in a video posted online. Love the girl them too much, you hurt the girl them. Man, you hear that? Some boy and some girl that on a well one see. You hear that? Molly Don said. The artist and his team thank their lucky stars that they were able to prove their innocence on the trumped up charges. We were released after about five hours. We were able to provide video evidence showing that the allegations were false and that it was actually a case of extortion. The investigating officer told us that the young lady and her pimp have since been arrested on charge with making a false report and extortion, and we were free to go, a member of the artist's entourage said. The men were released by police authorities at about 8 p.m. on Monday. The ordeal began when the V6 artist and four members of his entourage were arrested while attempting to leave Barbados return to Jamaica after a woman claimed that she had been drugged and sexually assaulted by the men in a hotel room. Reports emerged yesterday that Malidon and three other men were arrested at the hotel, while a fifth was colored by cops and immigration authorities at the Islands Grantle Adams International Airport. Malidon and his team were in Barbados for the Summerfest 2023 concert held at Kensington Oval, where he performed on Saturday. Reports said that the woman had returned to the hotel room with a member of the entourage. Things allegedly soured between the two and she reportedly vowed to have all the men arrested. She allegedly then proceeded to the station where she filed a report. However, the men had reportedly recorded the extortion attempt and handed over the evidence to the police to clear their names. Molly Don, who was born and raised in the Waterford community of St. Catherine, is experiencing a wave of success with his latest songs, Bank and V6, the lot of which has 14 million views on YouTube. Police probe fatal shooting of a man in Guy's Hill. Detectives assigned to the St. Catherine North Police Division are investigating a murder in the parish where an unidentified man was shot and killed early Tuesday morning. About 2 a.m., residents of the farming community of Ragsdale reportedly heard explosions at a premises. The police were summoned and upon their arrival, the body of a man, said to be in his 30s, was observed inside a house. The body had what appeared to be gunshot wounds to its upper torso. No motive has been established for the killing. Man in custody after killing brother over CD. A man is in custody following the fatal stabbing of his brother in Red Ground in the grill was Morland on Tuesday morning. The deceased has been identified as 52-year-old Michael Grant, otherwise called Screechy. Deputy Superintendent of Police, DSP Sean J. Mitchell, said that the men were reportedly arguing over a CD. Reports of that about 6.40 a.m., both brothers had a dispute when a knife was brought into play and Grant was stabbed to death. 
The suspect is in custody here at the Negril Police Station and is expected to be charged later today, DSP Mitchell confirmed. Repeat offender charge for illegal gun in Trelawney. One man was arrested on charge following a gun seizure on the Salt Marsh Main Road in Trelawney on Monday, August 28. Charged is 24-year-old Neil Walters, a construction worker of Charlestown, St. Mary. Reports from the Falmouth Police are that about 9.40 p.m., a team of officers was conducting a vehicle checkpoint operation in the area when they signaled the driver of a Toyota Isis motor car to stop. The vehicle and its occupants were searched and one Colt Commander .45mm pistol fitted with a magazine containing three .45mm cartridges was allegedly found in the possession of the occupant. Following an investigation, it was revealed that Walters is on bail for a similar breach of the Firearms Act. He was arrested and subsequently charged with possession of a prohibited weapon and unauthorized possession of ammunition. Quick Police Action leads to recovery of stolen motorcycle. Quick action by the St. Elizabeth Police led to the recovery of a stolen motorcycle and the motor car used by the thieves. Deputy Superintendent Coolidge Minto, head of the St. Elizabeth Police, said a number of items believed to have been stolen were found inside the vehicle, including poker boxes and a mask. DSP Minto said the incident occurred at about 5 a.m. on Monday. The gentleman was on his way to work driving his motorbike. Armed men in a silver Toyota Allen drove up, forced him off the bike, and drove away the bike. The matter was reported to the police, and among other things, intelligence led us to this address, where both the bike and the motor car suspected of being involved in this incident were recovered, he revealed. The SP Minto said the vehicles were found at a premises where construction is taking place. The men involved in the robbery were not seen, the senior cop continued to urge residents to report incidents as quickly as possible to the police. He thanked those who cooperated and assisted the police in recovering the stolen items. Scotiabank denies staff being investigated in Berlin attack. Scotiabank is dismissing reports its staff are being questioned in connection with the attack on a Berlin team in Mandeville, Manchester on Friday. We have not been advised by the police of any such action involving our staff and we have no reports of any for staff being questioned in connection with the attack, it said in a media release on Tuesday. It said this position was also stated by Deputy Commissioner of Police Fitzbailey. Scotiabank says as it seeks to manage the impact of the incident, its Manville branch was closed to the public on Monday to provide support to the team and will reopen at noon today. This is an ongoing investigation that is being handled by the police as is our standard in supporting law and order in all communities in which we do business, Scotiabank will continue to work with the police to do all we can to assist in this investigation, Scotiabank said. Connell's equipped 300 students at Sheffield Primary ahead of new school year. Administrators, teachers and parents at the Sheffield Primary School in Westmoreland are ecstatic about the Connell family's generous donations, which have provided approximately 300 students with backpacks filled with school supplies ahead of next week's start of the new school year. Dr. Vinet Malcolm, the school's principal, said that Dr. Norval Connell led family's contribution as strengthened their school's vision of caring for members of the community and will undoubtedly assist in boosting those persons' educational status. In respect of this contribution, the community would have benefited tremendously. The parents demonstrated gratefulness for it, and it also helps in promoting the school's vision in respect of care for the community, Malcolm said, Following Friday's presentation of backpacks and educational accessories to all registered students of the Sheffield Primary School by the Connell family. Avali Ferguson and Moral Holness, who were among the parents whose children benefited from the donation, were overwhelmed by the help they received, saying it was timely and would boost the morale of their children and the community as a whole. I'm overjoyed because it is very unusual for people to give you something that is beneficial to your growth or the growth of your children, said Ferguson who was sent to the primary exit profile and will start a little London High School in September. The quality of these bags is superb. These people put a lot of thought into their selection so that my son and his friends can step out in comfort and style when school starts September morning, she said. Holness believes that greater collaboration and networking for a good development, such as education, will make his Sheffield community and his surroundings a much better place to live and rear children. Things will be much better if the majority of those who can did what the Connell family is doing, Olness asserted. I respect them for what they have done for the children at this school and the wider community. This is what Jamaica needs, where everyone helps each one reach their full potential. 
He continued, the bugs and school supplies have arrived at an opportune time because not many of us can cover all of the financial costs required to prepare children for school in September. Lilith Connell Lindo, the Connell family spokesperson, stated that her brother, Dr. Norval Connell, a former student of the school, started the family's commitment to the institution some time ago, beginning with them funding one of its inter-house sports day houses dedicated in their honor. She mentioned that, although the family was supporting the children in their Connell house at school, they chose to broaden their reach to the larger community, which resulted in their outfitting the entire school population of more than 200 students. Among the nearly 300 students who received educational materials from the Connell family were 46 who had recently graduated and will be attending several prominent high schools throughout the parish and western Jamaica. In response to their patron's generosity, Jeremy Patterson, a sixth grade teacher and member of Connell House, said the initiative marks a watershed moment because every youngster walks away with a brand new backpack overflowing with critical school materials. As we begin a new school year, those resources become more than just tools. They represent the stepping stones to new opportunities, discoveries, and growth that the journey of learning holds, Patterson said. Your dedication and generosity have ignited positive change within our school community, she remarked of the Connells. JBN will keep you informed. Please remember to subscribe, share, like, leave a comment, and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.